President Trump declaring in the Oval Office just moments ago he is considering a payroll tax cut, something White House aides repeatedly denied over the last 24 hours. But he's not considering it because he's worried about the economy. The president insisting that move would have nothing to do with increased fears of recession, instead using the opportunity to once again slam Federal Reserve Chairman Jerome Powell. CNN's Pamela Brown starts us off today from the White House. President Trump pushing back against recession fears. I think the word recession is a word that's inappropriate. And defending the U.S. economy to reporters in the Oval Office today. We're very far from a recession. Uh, in fact, if the Fed would do its job, I think would have a tremendous spurt of growth. A tremendous spurt. The president starting his day on Twitter, sharing more than a dozen tweets from allies and supporters praising his administration's efforts on the economy. From Vice President Pence, our economy is thriving and Americans are winning, to the RNC chairwoman, economic confidence is at record highs. But even as the Trump administration touts the economy, CNN has learned behind closed doors, White House officials are mulling a payroll tax cut to offset anxiety over an economic slowdown. Payroll taxes, I've been thinking about payroll taxes for a long time. Whether or not we do it now or not is, uh, uh, it's not being done because of recession. The economy, not the only issue Trump is considering. On gun control, Trump once again seeming to back down from his push just a few days ago for extended background checks. We have very, very strong background checks right now, but we have uh, sort of missing areas and areas that don't complete the whole circle. After talking with lawmakers and NRA head Wayne LaPierre in the last week, Trump today using the lobbying group's language on gun control measures. A lot of the people that put me where I am are strong believers in the Second Amendment, and I am also. And we have to be very careful about that. You know, they call it the slippery slope, and all of a sudden everything gets taken away. We're not going to let that happen. Now, in addition to pressure from the NRA, the president's shift on background checks comes after his discussions with lawmakers and a briefing from White House officials who had been looking at various options. Now, White House officials still maintain uh, that gun control legislation is not off the table. The true test will be once lawmakers return from summer recess. But, Erica, this appears to be yet another example of the president touting certain initiatives only to back away under political pressure. That it does. Pamela Brown at the White House for us this afternoon. Pam, thank you. As we look at all of this, I do want to go back for just a moment to this payroll tax, which we've heard so much about. And there was this pretty strong denial, I know, Caitlin, for a little while. What is your sense? Is this really a serious consideration for the president or is it a bit of a trial balloon? Well, he admits he's been thinking about it, but really what you're seeing the broader point, they're looking at multiple things behind the scenes to stave off any kind of an economic turndown because even though they say publicly they're not worried about the recession, we are seeing concern inside the White House. The double-edged sword part of it is that they feel if it gets out that they're planning for some kind of recession or downturn, then it's going to lead to Americans tightening their belt and then lead to more mm -hmm. problems with the economy. So that's why you're seeing them say behind this or publicly that they're not considering anything, even though the president admits publicly today that, yes, a payroll tax cut is something that has been on his mind, among other measures. Among other measures. But there's also the fact, Jackie, that a payroll tax cut would directly undercut the president's own message about the strength of the economy. Well, right. But the president doesn't really concern himself with undercutting his own message. It's what he's saying at this moment, not to mention a payroll tax cut would take money away from Social Security, increase the debt, which no one cares about right now because there's a Republican president. But that aside, it, it, it the the president believes that a recession is a self-fulfilling prophecy, that if everyone starts talking about it, and as Caitlin said, people mm -hmm. start tightening their belt, it's going to happen. And this and he has put all of his eggs in the economy basket for re-election. So he has every incentive to keep this message up that everything's fine and we're just doing it because everything is great. Well, let's just let's remind people what a little bit of that message is. Here's a little bit more from the president. Our economy is doing fantastically. Our economy is incredible. And we're right now the number one country anywhere in the world by far as an economy. Very far from a recession. To Jackie's point, how long can the president continue with that message? when the debt and the deficit continue to bloom, when there is this increasing concern of a trade war, which he again tried to downplay today, but it is there. I mean, look, reality is reality. Either the economy is slowing or not, will slow or not. Germany is going into a recession. There's quite a lot of evidence that we might be heading towards, I think we are heading towards a slowdown. We might be heading towards a recession. 
And at that point, I was in a White House in 1991. We went into a very mild recession. We talked a lot about payroll tax cut, capital gains indexing, all the same things. Desperate, whenever White Houses start talking about this, in my experience, they're sliding into a recession. They're, they're flailing about trying to, too late. The truth is, even if you cut the, cap, the payroll tax in September, it's not clear it would affect any, you know, the, the stuff that's already built in is probably leading us to a slowdown. But I agree, the politics of what happens for the first time in the Trump presidency with a real slowdown is a big question mark. You know, we've, we're very used to interpreting Trump now for two and a half years. We've interpreted him against the backdrop of a pretty good economy and pretty good economic growth. And we don't know kind of what the politics of the Trump presidency, what the politics of the Democratic race are either, if you really get a serious slowdown. Well, and that's, that's the big what if, right, especially on the Democratic side. Right. Is what if there is a slowdown, but it's also the when, because that depends a lot on the message. Where it's both. Let, let's not forget that there's only so much control any president right. has over the economy. Yeah. And let's not forget that on voting day or voting week, voting month, it'd be about your perception of the economic conditions versus your personal circumstances, right? And let's not forget, most importantly, what President Trump is really good at. He's an entertainer. He's looking to see what else I can say to distract of that possible recession that's coming that everybody who's educated on economics has substantiated with studies and reports this is what's coming. No, let's make a distraction. I think it's all about getting that latest tweet out. He is, he is running, though, if we do look at some of the numbers, right? We hear the words from the president. There are numbers, though, in this case. Ronald McDaniel actually, actually tweeting out 6 million new jobs, 6 million plus new jobs, over half of those for women in this tweet. 500,000 manufacturing jobs created, record low unemployment among African Americans, Hispanics, and Asian Americans. Now, just to be clear, we went and we looked at all of these numbers. They are accurate. There is one minor tweak that I would make, and that is while there has been record low unemployment for Asian Americans under President Trump, it has ticked back up recently. So we are not in that moment right now. But given those numbers, that is a strong platform for this president to run on. Again, it's all personal. And if you look at the tweet that's right under her tweet, you could see that it is the third lowest from January to July of any of the last 10 years. So yes, the numbers are correct, but if you compare them to the last 10 years, especially the Obama administration, it's not marginally that much better. It really isn't. The markets may be strong, and he benefited when he took office from love from Wall Street. You know, there was economic growth. He inherited a good economy. But whether or not he can sustain that, he has also increased a lot of the trades. And if you look at the numbers, it is 95% of all those tariffs are on the backs of America and only 5% on China. So, you know, that doesn't bode well for the American farmer or for the American worker. But also, but with that's that why economy the he's had, you know, I just any normal president would be at 55 or 60 percent approval. He has had, a, you know, maybe a lot of the credit may be due to President Obama. Maybe he's slowed things down. Still, objectively, if you went to a political scientist or historian and said, here are the economic numbers for the first two and a half years of this guy's presidency, and we're not in any terrible war like Vietnam or anything like that, what, how, what's his approval rate, rating likely to be? And people would say 55, 60 percent. The fact that he's at 42 or 43 is because he's Donald Trump, and people disapprove of a lot of other things he's done, as I think they should. And the question is, how much lower does that 42 or 43 go without the strong economy bucking up some of those reluctant Trump supporters who don't like a lot of things he's doing, but do think, geez, you know, the economy's pretty good. I think if, that, if he loses that sort of, geez, the economy's pretty good sentiment, he's in real political trouble in the general election and maybe even to a Republican primary challenger. And that's the people who do approve of the job he's doing. One of the main reasons is because of the economy. Right. Despite what's going on inside the West Wing, the chaos, the turmoil, the policy back and forth that you've seen over the last two and a half years, they know that they can bank on the economy. And you see officials do that regularly. That's why you see the president saying he believes it's the media or it's the Democrats or he's blaming the Federal Reserve for the state of the economy because he doesn't want to take that blame because he knows that's his argument he can make to mm -hmm. 2020 voters. And he's hearing it even from people inside the White House who agree that it's being overplayed played those fears of a, of a recession and he doesn't have to be that worried about it, though some of his economic advisors are.